Hi everybody, welcome to Win Pillow Talk, another awesome day. We're grateful to God for his mercies that are new every day. Every day above the ground is enough to say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace and mercy upon all of us. You are here because the mercy of God spoke for you today. He didn't take into account your issues, your worries, your sin. He spoke for you. It is time for us to say, Lord, thank you for giving us another day. In this 11th month, there are people who are gone, who you expected to be with at this 11th month, but they're not here. Not because of what they did or didn't do. Not because of your righteousness that you're still here. Not even your alarm clock can take away that glory from God. It is all his mercy. So give him the glory and praise for still being alive. Our stories haven't ended because God still has work with us. Hang in us. Let us hang in there and let God finish what he has started in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody who has people in their houses know exactly what I'm about to say. Or they've said it. If you've had friends living with you, if you've had children, <laughs> like some of us have, <laughs> if you're taking responsibility over other people in your home. I always tell my kids, I said, in this house, there are rules and regulation. If you don't want to live by my rules, the door is always so open. You can live and decide how you want to live your life. I live in a nation that has rules and regulations. If you don't want to end up in prison, if you want to find favor in this nation and you want the nation to find favor in you, you, you would live by the rules and regulations and it will be good for you. Somehow when we get into the kingdom of God, we are anticipating or expecting that the kingdom of God is a free for all. It has no rules and no regulations. Indulge in every sinful nature that you like indulge in all the the uh, ungodly things that God lists in his word and assume and believe that Christ died for you he's taking away your past present and future so you can continue to sin we're reminded in a manner of life is God uh, the director of sin says God forbid God forbid you think the grace was given to you today that you should continue to sin God forbid you thought in your mind that this day was given even though you sinned last night and you were not killed or nothing bad happened to you that you should continue to live in that it says God is a God of long suffering he gives you an opportunity to transform that's why we all have grace to change and turn away from our evil ways and walk according to the will and the purpose of God. I have watched things on Facebook. Recently. I went on Facebook this morning to post a word that was in my spirit and um, I saw certain things and I laughed. A prophecy was given by a lot of men and women of God. We all know the prophecies about America. Well, I, I had one, not just because I didn't share, I shared with a few people around me and they all knew about it. Just because it didn't come out the way that you thought. And you think you can, you have the right then to question the men and the women of God. Think again, you're a child of God. The first question I'll ask you, when the prophecy, you saw that prophecy or you heard the videos in the prophecy, what did you do with the prophecy? Did you pray? Do you fast for that prophecy to come to pass? Did you do anything at all? But you're anticipating that by you doing nothing, the prophecy should just come to pass because God spoke it. Let us go back to the book of the manual of life. When the prophet Isaiah went to Hezekiah, King Hezekiah to say, keep your house in order. God says, I should tell you, you would surely die. He had the prophecy. He had the prophecy. He didn't argue with the man of God. The Bible says he turned and warred with that prophecy and took it back to God and fought with God. By the time the man of God went to the gates, God changed his mind, came back and said, God says, 
is adding another 15 years to you. Just think. If that prophecy came and he just took it and did nothing, will it manifest? The answer is he will surely would have died in a couple of days. As I was sharing the book of uh, my kids and I were doing the book of Jeremiah a couple of months ago actually. And uh, it reminded me this morning as I just meditated. Jeremiah kept on directing the children of God and saying, this is the prophecy God is speaking. God is going to destroy you people. God is going to give opportunity for Babylon to come and defeat you people. And you people become slaves. They saw him as a false prophet. They dumped him in the pit. They beat him up. They did all manner of things. At a certain point, he went back to God. He said, God, I'm not speaking. And he said, but your word is like fire in my belly. So I need to pour it out. Let us be careful when we start judging men and women of God. If you are a child of God, that opportunity, heaven is open. Nothing is closed. Heaven is open for you. War with that word. Take it back to God and ask God. God will speak. You're not a bastard. God will speak to you and tell you he's mine. You will understand the times in which we are living in. We, we question a lot of men and women of God. We all think leaders are there because that is God's will. Agreed. I read, read the book of Kings, the Kings. There were wicked leaders placed by God. There were good leaders placed by God due to the desires and the intentions of the people's hearts. God gave them what they wanted. If that is the case, there is a con, I would say, a semi war happening in my hometown because we don't agree with the precedent God has given us. The question, my darling brothers and sisters, is why are we then praying for God to remove him if it was God's choice? Let us allow the person be. Let us not remove, let us stop praying then that God should remove him. But bless, thank God for blessing us with that kind of a precedent. Let us not be lukewarm and double standard in the things of God. This morning I got up, the Lord was speaking to me about the weakness of his power. It's because of the double standard we all seem to have these days. The Bible says for you to be, Jesus said it clear, so for you to be my disciple, you need to die to self. You need to carry your cross and follow me. In the past, I thought, when you were a child of God, hey, your life became free selling. No harm will come there. Everything will move on well. Everything will move on as perfect as you want. It's a lie. The moment you change camps, the moment you change governments, a few heads have to go naturally and spiritually. When you understand those principles of life, you will work with what God has given you to do. If the prophecies came and you didn't do anything about it and nothing has happened, you cannot question it. You cannot even say anything about it because you didn't do anything. Go back to the New Testament. Timothy, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, he says, stir up the gifts that were given to you by your grandmother, your mother, and even the one that the men of God slapped on your head. Stir it up so that you can awaken the spirit unless things are stirred. Ask yourself, some of us have prophecies that haven't come to pass yet. Does that mean God is too lazy or he's not on time? God is never too late. You might be late. Sometimes we wait for God, but God is rather waiting on us because there are certain things we need to work on. But if we don't work on it, God will always give you the desires of your heart. Even if that is not the best thing for God, God permits our will because it's a permissible will. Your will, not God's will. And God will allow you. Men and women of God who have tried it understand exactly what I'm saying. So let us not be quick, my darling brothers, I beg of you people, to question and abuse men and women of God. You are a child of God. Take it back to God war with the word if you want to join in war with that word and let God speak to you it's so easy for us to blame 
other people. It's so easy for us to question other people's integrity. I remember this morning I got up, it says, God, so I've gone into the book of Luke, actually. I love the one in Luke. But Matthew 7, 1, it says, judge not and you shall not be judged. Because the measure at which you judge somebody is exactly that same measure that God will judge you. I don't know. I don't hope any of us want God to judge us. If God judges us, none of us will stand. Luke 6. I love the way Luke 6, 37 and 38, for those who want references, says it. It tells us why we shouldn't judge. It says, judge for you shall not be judged. Because the level of condemnation, judgment that you're placing on somebody else is exactly what God will give you. So he says, give. Give what? And he'll be giving back to you. What? Good measures. Huh? Press down. Shaking over. Will people give? Give forgiveness. Will give you love. Will give you empowerment. Will encourage you. Will not resent you for what you have done. But will forgive you. And allow and help to raise you up to God. So God can help you. Not to make hell. You see, we all, I can only give you what I have. I'm not expecting you to do anything even with it. But if you see the need to do something, do it and do it well. It will be probably better than me. If all the prophecies that we were given and somebody did not speak into your life, all those who took it to the grave would have manifested according to the will of God. But we know. The grave is the richest place on earth because there are gifts there that God sent for regeneration and they took it with them without never opening their package. Let us all desire to open our packages. Let us all desire to seek and understand the things God is doing at this hour at this time. Seek to have that intimacy with God and ask the Lord if you hear or you see a prophecy that you don't agree with, go back to God. Lord, what is this man saying? Is that true? I want to also hear your voice. I want to know you. I'm not a bastard. Pray. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, repent, from their evil ways and pray then I God will hear and I will heal their land don't be quick to judge others let us pray for God's intercession on earth as it is in heaven Jesus reminds us he says I am standing and knocking at the door if you open I will come in. But if you don't open, I will not come in. You know the horrible thing God did to all of us? He gave us free will. Free will to choose whether you want to open that door and invite Christ in or slam the door at his face. He will do nothing because it is your choice. We are reminded it is not what you say to anyone that harms them actually. What you say to me exposes your heart towards me, not even the words, but your heart towards me. Be careful what you say. We're reminded God is good. If you remove the one O in good, it becomes God. So sometimes when we want to exaggerate how good something is, you write the series of O's. The difference between good and God is an O. My darling brothers and sisters, pull yourself back with God, not with man, because we all can disappoint one another, but God can never disappoint you. Seek the face of God and you will not go wrong. Trust in him, not in man. Yes, love man, but trust God and all will be well with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Love you guys. Bye for now. <laughs>